Hi, hi, it's me again, Nico. Um, yeah, so I was going to leave this all alone. I was going to take the camera over into my living room and, you know, try to upload the uh, video and mess with it and data and stuff. And then I realized something. I haven't spoken about my book and it's been out for a year now and I haven't spoken about my book because there's a lot there's a lot of madness in that book and a lot of craziness in that book I've lived a wild ass life and for a good majority of well not a, well for some of the things that happened in my life I honestly if I wasn't there to see it happen and be in it in that moment I wouldn't believe that it happened and so, like, my life has been filled with some really, really crazy shit. Uh, when my book came out, uh, there was someone who was trying to throw a major monkey wrench into my uh, marketing and then accidentally backfired the situation where a couple of people actually bought my book because they wanted to see what the deal was. And it turns out that they are not exactly my demographic. And they don't care about the book because it's a really thick book about, well, the craziness that is my life. Meanwhile, this other person misrepresented my book as something of, uh, but you know what? I don't even know what she was trying to do with that. I do know that at some point she claimed that it was all about her. I don't think she knows what the term autobiography means. Um... But I'll be honest with you, since then, I've just really been slacking on um, on doing any kind of like advertisement for my book because in order to advertise something, right, you would have to break it down into like bite-sized bits and be like, well, here's a thing that's in my book, go get it. And here's another thing that's in my book, go get it. And I think that that's what I did with my entire life story, where it's like, I put it into a book and it's like, here, you can read that and kind of get it now. And, and don't ask me those questions because I don't want to talk about those things anymore. Um, so it's kind of hard for me to think of cutting it down into smaller little bite sizes because this is the smaller bite size version of my life. You know, if that makes sense. I don't know. Well. Anyway, so uh, reflecting upon my book today, I wanted to um, mention that I'm still doing interviews and anyone who wants to participate, please feel free to contact me. I would love to talk to you guys. I would love to put you guys on the record. Um, I'm doing interviews with anyone who remembers me from the time where I was a, a teenage runaway or anyone who remembers me from any of those crazy times that I've had in my life, uh, my time on 22nd street, um, my time when I was living in the, um, 23rd street with my grandmother, uh, basically anyone who, who remembers me from like way back or whatever, I would love to interview you guys and put down your memories of those times because my memories and your memories together probably come out to, something very, very close to whatever the truth is. I know what my truth is, it's in the book. Um, but I tend not to embellish or, or make things extravagant. I actually tend to downplay everything because I, whatever, dude. I mean, I was in a couple, I was in like over 17 car accidents and a good majority of them weren't like big bang up or, or whatever, it was like, they dented a fender or something. It wasn't like a big deal. It was just kind of scary, you know. Um, the two of them that were most traumatic to me, I detailed in the book. Uh, but for the most part, there wasn't really anything, that, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, I detail my lack of drug use throughout my life because I grew up around people who were on drugs and I just never had the inclination. I didn't care. I wasn't inquisitive about it because I already knew about it, you know, because I saw them as I was growing up and I never had, you know, any interest in it. Um, quite the opposite, actually. I was pushed away by the idea of, you know, my, my dad looking at someone going, oh, 
she lost like 40 pounds. Oh, she must be on the Coke diet again. It was it was something like that always when whenever I, I looked at these people, my dad always had these judgments set aside for this one who's on that drug or that one who's on that drug. And he kind of like drilled it into my head. Not that I judge anybody for doing these things, but I don't want to judge me for doing these things because I would judge me. That's just me. I don't know. I don't know. I'm weird. But that being said, there's just a whole bunch of shit in my book that honestly some of it was fun to live through some of it was insane to live through i had an insane boyfriend and um for some years uh i would run away from home and i'd run to him and then when he got psychotic i'd run from him to several other places and sometimes those other places involve crossing state lines and uh, more often than not he would find me wherever i was and he would take me back to his house in a rather violent manner. And so um, I detail a little bit of that in the book, not for shits and giggles and not for people to look at me like I'm some sort of victim. I'm not. That was when I was 15, 16 years old. You know, you don't know, you don't know better at that time in that in your life, especially when that's really all you were exposed to, you know, you see that in everyone else's lives and you think, oh, that's the next normal place for my relationship to go because it's where everyone else's relationship goes, you know? I told my story because it's a common story. Half of the people in New York have the same story. We all know each other's pain because we kind of look at each other and we can smell our own, really we know what the deal is when someone's having an argument with the other and, and they have that stuck on stupid look like fuck i got caught shit's gonna go down now we all look at each other with that shell we look at each other with that shell shock looking it's like damn and you feel empathy for them but you don't get involved because you're a new yorker and you're you're going about your day you don't want to sit here and be the witness to complain to the cops because of this, that, and the other, you mind your business because it's New York and that's what you do, or that's what you did, because now it's all about see something, say something, right? But yet, in the time in which I grew up, it wasn't like that. In the time in which I grew up, it was all about keeping your mouth shut and staying out of everyone else's business. And I think that that's the story that a lot of people have that most people don't tell. You know, because we all had it. We all got our asses kicked once we got home from school or whatever. We all were latchkey kids. We were all beaten and traumatized by our parents. We were all, you know, not all, but like a good number of us were. And so the, the story I'm telling, even though it's my story and my version of what happened, it's not different. It's not entirely different from most of the kids who grew up in my age, in my time. Any Gen Xer could tell you the same thing. We all ran away from home. We all got tattoos and we all spiked our hair in cones and shit. We all did these things and we all learned to fight and we all learned a lot of really, really crazy survival techniques and stuff. And, and we all learned it because of what we had gone through. And the reason why I say we all did is because, like I said before, my story isn't uh, incredibly unique. My take on it, I guess, is and the way I speak about it is, but it's not necessarily unique. A lot of us have it. I just happen to have a voice. I happen to be able to put my words together in a certain way. And I guess uh, one of my brothers was reading my book and so he called me up and he's like, fuck you. And I asked him, you know, is there a specific reason why, you know, I'm, I'm being told fuck you? And he's like, yeah, because I'm reading your book right now. And I hear I hear you reading it to me in my head because you wrote it in your voice. I hear it in your voice. So I apologize in advance to anyone reading my book. If you hear it in my voice, I'm so sorry. Try hearing it in Morgan Freeman's voice. It would be so much better that way. Or, or Kiefer Sutherland. He's a great narrator. You should watch the movie 12. You'll see how great a narrator he is. And then after watching 12, 
right? He goes straight into reading my book and you'll hear his voice narrating instead of mine. See, there you go. And, and we've all learned a little bit here. We've learned that I'm a little bit more than a little bit crazy. And we'll talk soon. Bye.